So I've come across against this weird thing, and it says, should we get rid of throw and some football? And I'm thinking to myself, let's see where this goes. Okay, let's start. In December 2009, Arsene Wenger suggested scrapping throw-ins. The French... Why would Arsene Wenger suggest that we should scrap throw-ins? What a weird person. Yes, you've won the, well, won the league Invincibles in 2000. Whatever it was, but what gives them the right to throw, to to get rid of throw-ins? Let's keep it. Richman argued that implementing kick-ins to restart play would significantly speed up the game, but Wenger was not a reliable witness. So he thought that kicking the ball in would be faster than throwing the ball in, but not necessarily. I personally think that you could get the ball not kick it to the person that you're supposed to go to and slow the game down I have a lot with that, that would be just annoying let's continue the previous month his Arsenal side lost 2-1 at Stoke City with both the Potters goals coming from Rory Delap's trademark long throw so Rory Delap man, who was a good player he could throw the ball so long you get your ball into like Peter Crouch or you get your ball into Whoever there was at the time, you could just throw it straight in, and no, it was hard to have for them to stop it. That season, it yielded a Premier League high eight goals and led to 53 shots. Wow! Clearly, still irked, Wenger suggested outlawing throw-ins, claiming that long throw specialists boasted an unfair and unusual strength in football because their hands can effectively kick the ball. So he says that they should ban throw-ins because. Effectively, the hands are like long throw specialists. Hands are like feet. What like feet, Hans of Inger? Like feet. How does that compare? Wenger's view was largely taken with a pinch of salt, but former England striker Gary Lineker also threw his support behind banning throw ins. Really, for Lineker? Different reasons. It's called football, Lineker said. What's the point of throw ins? It takes ages. Just put it down and knock it in. The average. They say, so Gary Lineker, being Gary Lineker, the weird cunt he is, says to throw the ball in takes longer. You just said to put it down because it's called football, so you play with your feet. And I think to myself, you're a professional, you've been played professional football. Why? You're one of these weird boys, aren't you? Which Premier League game has 47 throw ins? And Lineker was right to point out that they slow down football, especially in England's top flight, where a single ball is used. The average Premier League match sees just 58% of action. A standard game lasts for 96 minutes and 24 seconds, including injury time, but the ball is only in play for 55 minutes and 36 seconds, and most likely that number will drop further with the introduction of video assistant referees. So VR. So you only play 55 minutes and 36 seconds. All up of actual football being in play in the Premier League, but yet there's games 96 minutes and 24 seconds long on, on average. So you only see 57.68 percent of action. That's ludicrous, but effective at the same time. You take effectively time wasting by throwing the ball, kicking the ball out. This season. The ritual of taking the throw, which can involve handing off or drying the ball, eats up around eight minutes per match and is the second lengthiest cumulative stoppage behind free kicks. Goal kicks, corners, injuries, and substitutions also run down a significant portion of the clock. So, drying the ball off during a game takes seven minutes and 47 seconds. Well, Free kicks take 10 minutes and 40 seconds of a game. And so look at that. That's what, 10, 17, 21, 26, 32. So 38 minutes is actually with the ball. It's either the kind of play, the person's been fouled, the person's been injured, there's a goal kick, the person's drying the ball, <laughs> or it's a substitution. So that's 32 minutes. 
Which, yeah, I have a nine minute match. That's only 58 minutes left, more or less. Wow. Wow. The International Football Association Board, or IFAB as it's known, could follow the National Basketball Association's lead and put a shot clock on throw-ins to ensure they're taken quicker or simply ban longer run-ups. An even simpler fix would be to introduce the multi-ball system, which is already employed in the Champions League and has sped up throw-ins by almost one minute per game. But the multi-ball system isn't always faster or fairer. In 2009, Brendan Rodgers' Reading were frequently labelled cheats for allegedly instructing ball boys to delay returning the ball to opponents in order to avoid facing quick throws. Tweaking throw-in rules or formats would only be worthwhile if time was actually saved. The goal is to prevent scenarios like last season, when 8 minutes and 15 seconds of Cardiff City's 2-1 home loss to Burnley was spent waiting for Sean Morrison to take throw-ins for the Welsh side at an average of 24.75 seconds each time. So he took, in one match, 24.75 seconds per throw, which all of them had to get it added to 18, 8 minutes and 15 seconds. That's staggering. In one game, 8 minutes. Unsurprisingly, the Premier League's most... And then eat up more biggest portion of throw ins in the final third or when under significant pressure also eat up more time, but still tend to be completed within 15 seconds. And the direction of the throw also affects the timing. When the ball travels forwards, it often moves into a more congested area, making the delivery more complex and time consuming. There is no denying replacing throw ins with kick ins would significantly change the fabric of football, probably creating a more direct game, but it wouldn't necessarily speed things up. Time. So he says that kickings would be faster, but in theory would not make the game faster in theory because you could still time waste. And um, shit. Thank you guys. I'm gonna cut it there. This is quite boring to be honest, and I will post a new video tomorrow. Put your suggestions down below what you want, and um, yeah, thanks guys.